Hi, What The Hell Tech listeners. I'm your host this week, Rebecca Lindley, Senior Comms Executive. This is the podcast where we tackle some of the trending topics, ideas and best practices in health and social care. This week, I'm speaking to Justine Absin, Head of Marketing at Radar Healthcare, and some of you may recognise her as the face of the podcast. In this episode, we're taking the time to reflect on and celebrate the past two years of our What The Health Tech podcast. Um, so thanks for joining us this week, Justine. Thank you. It's very strange being on this side of the yeah. um, this side of the desk, and I'm not sure about being faced for the podcast, <laughs> but unintentional maybe. Yeah, you're in the hot seat this week. I know. <laughs> um, so after two seasons, 68 episodes and 75 guests, I think the listeners would like to know what inspired you to start What The Health Tech? So the reason for starting What The Health Tech was around, we wanted to create a platform where we could bring health and social care, the industry together a little bit um, and speak to um, industry experts, speak to um, different people across across the wider industry um, and basically be able to create somewhere where people could share challenges, they could share best practice, um, they could share knowledge, they could share expertise. There's obviously such a wide spectrum across across health and social care um and there's so much negative press as well um that you know whenever it's in the media it's always something negative it's so rarely positive and we knew from talking to our partners that there's so much positivity across health and social care but it never really gets shared um there's people at work in work in the industry that do amazing things every single day that if we could share that a little bit or find a way to do it that they may be able to kind of inspire other people in the industry as well to to do similar things so um you know somebody might have implemented something in a care home for example that's a really simple thing to do but you know nobody else knows about it so by sharing these stories and sharing what people are up to it should basically or we we hoped that you know we might be able to elevate the standard of care that is happening right across the the uk um and the world really because we've got international listeners as well which is is fantastic yeah, definitely. And I think just from listening to the episodes, every episode, even if it is quite a serious topic, there is positive work being done. And it always does make you smile when you hear that kind of um, stuff. So, yeah. yeah, absolutely. I think that is that is definitely something that we really wanted to get out there. And we know there's challenges. So, you know, we've not shied away from from sharing topics around those either. Um, but yeah, the inspiration for it was all about how can we share anything we possibly can that could potentially help help people with their their everyday lives when they're in the health and social care industry yeah definitely and everyone's stronger when they come together so exactly (laughs) (laughs) um so what's been the most rewarding aspect of hosting um what the health tech i think that's a really difficult one actually because it's there's so many but i think it is just talking to people um i think you know talking to so many inspirational people um across health and social care is is definitely a rewarding thing for for me as a host um and also seeing people within um radar healthcare as well kind of get involved with it so yeah. you know we've got we have different people that come and host um from across the business we've had different guests on as well from from radar healthcare as well as um the wider industry and i think sort of seeing people come out of their shells a little bit and actually doing something that's completely different um and really be behind us in in doing it is is definitely one of the most rewarding things um i think it's kind of you know it's almost like therapy (laughs) yeah in a weird way um you know you get to talk about so many different topics and you get to you know sort of elevate your knowledge bank as well around things you know we've talked to so many different people about different things in the industry and things that you know i'm not an expert on or anything like that and you sort of come away just feeling really inspired and uplifted and yeah at the end of every episode i've I've ever recorded you just feel amazing yeah definitely and like you said it's just a completely new experience for us like I know a lot of people who've done the hosting like the first time have been like really nervous like me (laughs) and then come away and they said that they absolutely love it and they want to go and I can do it again so yeah yeah. and I I think that's it it's actually it's giving people you know something different to go and do and you know everybody wants to enhance their skill set and things like that and I think the really lovely thing about the podcast is it yes it's run 
looked after by the marketing team but actually everybody across the business has got involved in it from senior management team from development team from the customer experience team sales you know everybody's kind of got involved and I think that's a really special thing that people can kind of really get behind yeah and it's also a really good tool internally too for sharing knowledge obviously like expanding skills understanding industry challenges those kind of bits and bobs too so yeah yeah, absolutely. And I think that is that is another really key point to it. You know, being able to share this stuff internally as well as externally is is really important. Yeah. So what would be a memorable or standout moment or episode um, from the past two years? There are so many, um, but I think there's a, there's a few. Um, so the one of my um, one of the things that really struck a chord with me is one of our earliest episodes. Um, and it was with Biggie and Donaghy um, around dementia care. And he made a point within it. Um, there was a bit about loneliness and how, you know, how that really sort of people suffer with it and how that really impacts them. And he made a really good point in there about, you know, smiling at someone, you know, smiling at your neighbour, saying hello to your neighbour, um, anything like that. It's like the simplest thing people can do. Yeah. But the impact that that can have on somebody's day is... Yeah, absolutely cr- crazy yeah and I think just that there's a line in it that he said something like you know you can't impact the world but you can impact your street yeah. and I just think that is such a strong thing that anybody can do anybody can take away and you know just doing that simple thing can really change somebody how someone's feeling that day um and I thought that is just one of those things that stuck with me from from literally the the second I heard it heard it ever said um I think there's there's another couple that I think for for me were really key key things to get out there. So um, there was an episode one of one of my first ever episodes was um, around women's health yeah. um, and inequalities, and it was with Lottie Moore who worked for Public Policy Projects at the time, mm-hmm. and we discussed things like you know periods, menopause, abortion. Um, anything you know those topics that there's a lot of stigma still around yeah and I think you know there was a statistic that Lottie shared in there that 20 million girls miss school every year because of periods yeah um, and because they don't have access to period products and I just think that in 2024 that is an absolutely crazy yeah shocking scary yeah absolutely shocking statistic um and I think you know Talking about topics like that, being able to talk about it openly, being able to get that out there into the public eye, um, you know, just kind of those sorts of things and raise awareness of, of how big these things are is a really, you know, really special thing to be able to do. Yeah, we did another episode as well last year around a similar topic. So that was with Sarah Graham about her book, um, Rebel Bodies, A Guide to Gender Gap Revolution. Um, And again, you know, she kind of started that, she created that book following her work as a freelance journalist um, and how many stories she heard from women about, you know, she they felt like it was only happening to them. Um, they felt isolated. They felt alone. They felt yeah. like some of these issues that were going on were things that just happened and they'd be normalised. And, you know, you kind of, you talk to people about this stuff. And, you know, when I read her book, I was amazed at how many things were happening to, to women across the, yeah. the UK um, and the world. And it just... You know, I think the things I took away from those two episodes in particular is you have to talk about these things and you have to be able to get them out in the open. And it's not just talking about them to each other. It's about bringing everybody into that wider conversation and talking to men about them. Um, And the only way we're going to kind of ever create change and improve things is by bringing everybody into the conversation. So to be able to, you know, have episodes like that, that you're talking about topics that are really serious that really impact on people's day-to-day lives. But being able to talk about it openly, being able to get that conversation out there, being able to almost show people that they shouldn't be afraid to talk about this stuff. Yeah. Um, and being able to do that as part of the podcast, I think those that sort of side of things and being able to kind of, you know, raise that awareness is is yeah something that I'm I'm pretty proud of those episodes yeah definitely and I think like you've just said not being afraid to have these conversations is the way that we drive action for these kind of things because I think a lot of people myself included would be shocked to hear those stats Mm -hmm. and how big of a gap there actually is um obviously it's a lot better than it was but there's still so much that needs to be done and yeah 
if the podcast can facilitate those conversations, then that is such a big win for us. Yeah, and I think it is just, it's getting things out there that people are unaware of. Like there was things talked about in some of those episodes that, you know, I I didn't know about. And, you know, you sort of, um, there's, I think there was a there was a little bit in one of them, I can't remember which episode it was, where, you know, if a man wants to go and get a vasectomy, it's quite straightforward for them to go and do it. Yeah. If a woman wants to have an abortion, they have to go through so many things to be able to for that to happen. Yeah. And, you know, it's kind of, there's many reasons why people need to do these things. And you just, there's lots of, I think, gaps. And I think it's, yeah, I think there's just things in there that you wouldn't, you don't ever realise. And I think being able to talk about those is, yeah, it's just, it's important to be able to get, to, for people to feel comfortable, for yeah. everybody to feel comfortable. So, you know. Whether, whether men, women, um, it's just, I think it is about everybody feeling comfortable to have these conversations. Yeah, and giving that reassurance, I guess, too. Some people might be going through these situations, so it's nice to hear potentially like some expert uh, shining light on these these topics to give them, obviously, best practice, tips, where to go, those kind of things. Definitely. So as you know, at the end of every episode, um, we ask our guests what's your what the health tech moment um where did that segment come from so the idea from that actually came from um Stephen Bartlett the diary of a CEO um at the end of every episode he has a certain thing that he asks and we really like the fact that you know there was like this consistent way of ending an episode yeah um and we just just thought it was a really nice way to to sort of finish it off we obviously wanted to include something around healthcare or technology or you know that kind of thing and yeah, it, it started off as, let's see what happens with it. Um, and do you know what? It has been the best thing we ever yeah. did with it. Yeah. It's, we have had like the most amazing set of um, stories from, from what the health tech moments. So we've had like really weird ones. We've had funny ones. We've had emotional life changing ones. Um, and I think it's a really nice way for people to share their personal stories yeah. um, or experiences of things that they've, they've kind of experienced you know, experienced in yeah. the in the world of healthcare. You know, a lot of our guests have worked in, in health and social care for years and years. So some of the things they've seen are yeah. incredible. Yeah, um, so many different stories they could tell. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, it's just been a really nice way to to end the episode and um and I'm really pleased that we we kind of implemented that from literally episode one. Yeah, I always look forward to the end of the episode just to hear the <laughs> the different stories because as you said, some of them are so out there and funny and then you've got the emotional ones um, and the shocking ones too. So um, do you have any particular one that is a standout moment for you? I've got a few actually. There's um, We had we had a really funny one um, from... Um, it was from um, Terry, who, who used to work with us, and he uh, he shared something about um, EU years and this is absolute years ago. But he went to um, to check up on a, a server for a, um, a big organisation, a big healthcare organisation, and um, and the secretary who was who was taking him up to it was um, was was showing him where it was and things like that. And had said that she needed to kind of go with him because she wanted to water the plant, which she thought was a bit odd. Uh, it turns out this plant was sat on top of the server on a little doily, and she literally just used to water it on top of the server. I think he literally was like, "Oh my gosh, like you know, it's quite dangerous to yeah. do that." So, uh, so that was quite a funny one. Um, and then we've had there's a really lovely one from Judy Walker um, in her episode where she talked about after action reviews. And she basically, years, I think it was in the 90s, she worked in paediatrics um, and she experienced that when children were going through cancer treatment and were having to have radiotherapy, they were getting, they were having to go into general anaesthetic. So, you know, if you were going through radiotherapy, you were having general anaesthetic every day for the course of your treatment, which was obviously impacting nutrition because you obviously can't yeah. eat before it. Um, just, you know, the cost involved, I guess, to the, the hospital. Um and the reason they were having it was because everybody was convinced that children couldn't lie still and they were scared of these big machines that they were obviously having to to lie in um, to get the treatment. And she basically 
realised that if you spent a little bit of time with, with children before that, so you played with them with, you know, teddies or toys or, or whatever it was, um, went in the room with them, made them feel comfortable around the machinery, showed them where their, you know, mum or dad was going to be, um, got them, you know, showed the teddy lion still in it, got them to, like, practice a little bit, that you didn't need to give them general anaesthetic to have this treatment they could you know they could yeah. do it with they could lie still and and have it um and that today is still normal is normal practice and i just think you know judy had obviously such a big impact on you know yeah. what's happening today um by doing that and you know time is built into treatment plans to enable that to happen which that is all it needed to do um so i thought that was a really really nice one Definitely. Um, and then we've also had um, Anthony Hall shared a lovely one. Yeah. We've had a couple actually from um, um, from people who like work with with patients with dementia and, and residents with dementia. Um, and um, yeah, Anthony Hall from HC One shared a lovely one about um, there was an elderly gentleman in one of their homes who kind of day to day routine was to go to the shop and get a morning paper. Um, and he used to be able to do it, but as his dementias progressed, then obviously that that can't happen. So they basically came up with, with the permission of, you know, the agreement with the family and stuff like that, that they've put um, little trackers in his slippers so he can basically go and do that. Yeah. And you just think, you know, it can safely do it. And, you know, the impact that that has on that gentleman's quality of life is in crazy. Um, and, you know, it enables him to lead the life he wants to do, but then, you know, not... Um, not a risk not, or anything. Yeah, exactly. So it's, you know, that was lovely. And then there's another one from from um, someone with dementia, which is a little bit of a funnier one, which Julie Rayner shared from Hallmark. And hers is about, you know, they they like to get their dementia patients involved in different bits and pieces. Um, you know, they might kind of say to them, do you want to help lay the table? Do you want to do this? And one of the residents in um, in one of her homes firmly put her in her place by basically saying she absolutely did not want to lay the table. <laughs> she does not pay a fortune to live in this care home to lay the table <laughs> and went back to her room quite happily. <laughs> so, well, at least she's honest. Exactly. So you just, you know... Those ones, those handful that I feel like I've just shared are so different. Yeah. And, you know, from 50, uh, well, what have we done now? 60 episodes, um, on 60 episodes, you know, to have all of those moments brought together is is really special. So, yeah, there's there's loads like that that, yeah. that, are, um, that are worth sharing. But, um, yeah, I'd like to know, what what about you? What's Have you got any I mean, that you like so to share? many. I, obviously, I love the one from Anthony Hall about the, um, the dementia mm. patient. I think that's such a lovely story. Um, and really just highlights health tech mm -hmm. and the impact that it can make. Um, but one that really stands out for me is um, the one with Craig, Craig Rainford, um, who used to work for Four Seasons. And he basically told a story about how they um, had an initiative to create magic moments with their residents. And this lady had a bit of a wish list. She was turning 100. And one of the um, things on her wish list was to ride in a hot air balloon. And um, yeah, they they made it happen, and I just think that is such a such a lovely story. Not even just for the, obviously the resident, but every for everyone involved too. Mm. It's just such a nice, happy memory mm. for them all to have. I think as well, like you sort of hear moments like that, and it does show you or remind people that actually the people that work in care are really passionate about you yeah. know making people happy and you know providing the best quality of care that they possibly can, whether it's for a resident or a patient, or you know it kind of it brings that back that you know the the feeling that they will have had from seeing that resident happy would be amazing. Yeah, definitely. I think they spend like so much time with these people that they will become like their extended family in, in some cases. Yeah. So yeah, being a part of making their day or making their 100th birthday in this case is obviously such an achievement. Um, so what notable changes or trends have you observed since starting the podcast? I think it's, I don't know if it's since starting the podcast or since just kind of being more involved in in a lot of it but I think one thing that I've definitely noticed certainly in the last probably year or two is I do think things are becoming a lot more like patient centered yeah. or resident centered of the people that you support these organizations support um I think there's a lot going on around 
you know, really kind of putting them at the heart of things. And, you know, we talk to a lot of our partners and things like that. And you, yeah. you hear that so often now. There's a lot of things getting implemented that, that can kind of help that. I think the other thing is, you know, there's a lot of people now that are trying to link together systems. So, you know, there's a lot of siloed systems out there that, um, you know, across health and social care that don't talk to each other. And that impacts the level of care people can get. It impacts, you know, what doctors know, what what care homes know, you know, if someone's gone into hospital and then coming back into a care home. And, you know, there's so many different different things. But I definitely think that, you know, linking these things together is something that's been talked about for so long I've certainly seen in the last sort of year, especially year, 18 months, that a lot of our partners are actually doing it now. So I think there's a lot more action to kind yeah. of make sure that is happening rather than just talking about it. Um, I think it's becoming such a big, people have realised what the impact can be if they link things together. And I think that's certainly something that is seems to be becoming, hopefully becoming easier yeah, um, the more we develop these these different things we attended obviously uh, you were there too the digital healthcare show um a couple of weeks ago and that was such a pivotal topic mm. within all the discussions about how tech can kind of linked up tech interoperable tech can help um organizations to align processes streamline operations and all those kind mm. of good things so yeah definitely which directly impacts care and as well get, allows um, workers more time to be able to not only care for their patients but our residents but for themselves too for little breaks um, training opportunities all those kind of things too so there's there's mm. endless benefits to it yeah I think as well it, it gives us kind of it gives us the what the podcast is doing is giving us a a platform to be able to share some of this stuff as well so yeah. um you know we've got we share things that of things that are happening in the industry like now yeah so you know we've got episode with um helen hughes from patient safety learning about um the implementation of PSURF. um we've done episodes with louis worth about cqc and all the changes that are going on across cqc at the moment we've talked to anthony hall about the cqc side of things we've talked to judy walker about after action reviews so we're trying to kind of use it as well to to talk about the things that are relevant at the time as well as things that are quite a little bit more generic or things that are more evergreen or or whatever that might be so I think it it allows us to bring these experts into the field um and you know share that knowledge and and best practice with with all the organizations that can then take these little bits away and you know understand a bit more about actually you know PSURF is going to be good for us because of xyz um you know the CQC changes, you know, how do we start doing that? Well, actually, you know, these are the bits we need to start doing and they can take these little bits and start and implement them across their their organisations. Yeah, definitely. And I think, like you've just mentioned, the PSURF episode with Helen Hughes, that's our most watched podcast ever mm. um, on YouTube and on Spotify, I think, too. Mm. And then, obviously, the CQC Get Ready with um, Lowy Worth as well. Mm-hmm. That's a super popular episode. So I think anything that's super topical at the moment where we can be reactive to to provide additional information, spread awareness, mm. like you said yeah definitely and it's just it's so important because there's so many things that you know care um healthcare organizations have to do yeah um you know there's lots of things that change all the time there's lots of legislation they have to be aware of there's just information overload basically yeah um and i think you know if you can listen to one of our episodes and you know in you know 40 minutes something like that and and just take a little bit away and it, it helps you to kind of break that down a little bit more, then that's a that's a really positive thing. Um, I think, like you said, you know, when you sort of see that the piece of episode is the most watched and the most popular, it shows how relevant that topic yeah. is. Um, and I think what we try and do is kind of make sure we can get on, get this information out as soon as we can as well. Yeah, definitely. I think it comes back to our values. We're not just a risk quality and compliance software. We are, we are there for health and social care mm-hmm. organisations across everything that they're they're doing and if this podcast can make their lives a little bit easier then that's a massive win yeah and then just before we um wrap up then um as we obviously celebrate this milestone what message would you like to say to your listeners that have been with you from the start thank you (laughs) (laughs) 
Um, yeah, just thank you, really. I think it's, uh, you know, when we started the podcast, we did a weekly episode. Um, so for the first year, we we wanted to do make sure we put out an episode a week. So yeah. 52 episodes. And, you know, it's that was a lot of hard work. Um, and, you know, you don't get people listening straight away. You have to kind of do a bit of awareness around yeah. it. You know, people don't know it exists. Um, so I think, you know, having people listening from day one, fantastic. Um, and I think, you know, it's just being able to, you know, share that knowledge and, um, yeah, for people to start talking about it. And, you know, it's it's just, yeah, thank you is, is definitely the biggest thing. You know, we love doing this. Um, it's something that we're really passionate about and we want to keep doing it and, you know, to to have people listening to it and learning from it and benefiting from it means it's worth us doing it. Um, so I think, yeah, definitely thank you for listening. Um, thank you for support and thank you to, you know, we've had all our guests and things like that. You know, we wouldn't be able to do this without without the support of, of people who want to come on and talk to us, you know, yeah. and giving up their time to come and do that. Um, we wouldn't be able to do it without kind of the support of Radar Healthcare as a company in general, because, you know, we, we need that kind of um, internal support as well. So, um, and I think thank you to everyone for sharing things as well. So, you know, we, we had somebody... Um, a few weeks ago who was on a plane on the way back from <laughs> yeah. um, um, an event in Dubai. And they basically were talking about our podcast to somebody else on the plane um, because they were talking about potentially setting something up. And, um, and yeah, they Tom just sort of said, oh, have you ever listened to what the health tech? Like, that, you know, yeah. be worth listening to it, this, that and the other. And, you know, and then um, uh, Catherine, who, who um, was the person who was, was, then told yeah. about it, um, you know, got in touch sort of thing and and wrote about it on LinkedIn. And you just, that type of conversation that is happening that we're unaware of yeah. is that makes you go, oh my gosh, this is worth it. Yeah. You know, people are listening to it and people are taking things away from it. So yeah, thank you. Yeah, definitely. And I think it's such a milestone to have those advocates that are singing your praises out of earshot mm -hmm. as well. Um and I guess, like you've just mentioned, there is a lot of work that goes into, obviously, the promotion of what the health tech behind the scenes, mm -hmm. a lot of marketing to get that brand awareness up. Um, I guess one thing that I, I wanted to ask as well is, where did the name come from? Because <laughs> every time I approach people now asking them to come on the podcast, they chuckle a little bit when they hear the name. So it was a complete team effort. We knew we were going to do the podcast. We we decided about that. So we got the mar whole marketing team into a room with loads of post-it notes. Yeah. And we literally had a whiteboard where we split stuff down, where we had things about, um, we had lists about topics that we want to cover. We had um, audience. We had feeling. Um, I think there was something else as well. Um, I can't remember what the other one. There was about four or five different um, different themes, if you yeah. like. I think themes actually was one of them. Um, and we literally sat individually and wrote loads of post-it notes and, and put them all up. And then as a team, gradually went, actually, no, we don't all agree with that one. No, we don't all agree. And cut it down to, I think we got four um, final names, if you like. And then we put it out as a vote to the to the company, basically. Um, we wanted to make sure that it included everyone. So yeah. obviously we work across health and social care and we wanted to make sure it, it was inclusive to everyone. So there was a couple of names we'd come up with where we felt that if we'd gone with that, it would have been more, um, yeah. you know, focused around the NHS or hospitals or that side of things. If we'd focused it around, if there was, a, there was another name that was maybe more aligned with social care. And so we tried to like break it down like that um, and make sure that it was, it felt inclusive. Um, obviously we wanted health in there somewhere the fact that we're a technology company yeah. we kind of wanted to get in there so yeah it was just it was a team effort and yeah it was a day of um, post-it notes <laughs> which sounds so marketing doesn't it um, but yeah that's that's where it came from and do you know what I absolutely love it yeah me too I really do and I like that everyone kind of smiles a little bit when they see it and they're like yeah. oh that's clever and it obviously worked out really well for the What the Health Tech moment. So. <laughs> exactly. And we didn't even know at that point we were doing that. So, yeah, some things just fall into place, I think. Yeah. 
And then the final question then is, I guess, for anyone that's interested in being on the podcast, Mm -hmm. what is the process? How do they get in touch? So basically email us. Um, We put our email um, address on this and um, it's at the end of every episode and then all the notes and things like that. So um, yeah, anyone can email us. Um, We're always looking for people that want to come on. within the within the industry um you don't even have to work directly in healthcare you know you might kind of be a company that that has something that um i don't know like benefits yeah. healthcare for example yeah um, like an agency or- yeah um that kind of thing and but it's yeah we're always looking for for people that kind of want to share best practice talk about challenges talk about um things that they might have seen or you know things that that are benefiting um, uh, people within the industry um, and then what we do is we tend to kind of reach out once we've kind of spoken to someone sometimes I'll reach out on LinkedIn to people as well that, that I might see that are relevant um, and then we basically set up a bit of a chat we um, talk about kind of the process we record either here in the studio like we are today um, or we can do online ones as well so depending on where the, the person's located sometimes online works better Yeah, and I would say like we've got a a mix a total mix of um of those across across all the episodes we've done so yeah we'll we then have a chat um discuss sort of what we want to talk about what a good theme would be what the topic might be um and then what we tend to do is go away and write some questions as a basis um more to kind of have that sort of flow of a conversation so quite often we don't end up running through question by question it ends up yeah. just being a conversation but yeah that forms the basis of the of the podcast um and then we basically we we book a date and then we we record so um it depends on sort of the com- how comfortable the guest is on how much prep we do beforehand um some guests just kind of want to come on and are so comfortable talking yeah. about their topic that we literally apart from having that initial conversation that's it until we do the the record um some people kind of want a little bit more um more kind of in-depth yeah. prep so we, we do that as well so um and then yeah then we do, we do the record um and then we we basically choose a choose a date for it to go live um and then make sure that the, the guest is aware and and go from there but yeah that's it's quite a straightforward process yeah. um we kind of you know depending on um depending on how how available the guest is depends on how quickly we do the record um so we can we have some that we will like we've got some booked ready for july for example that were booked a couple of months ago um yet we've got others that you know we're recording one next week yeah um which was only just decided last week so you kind of it depends on availability and things like that but the process can be kind of we can do things quite far ahead or we can do things a little bit more um uh quicker as well so, but yeah, but I'd, I'd sort of say to anybody that's interested in coming on to, to reach out because yeah, we're always looking for, for people to, to share their stories and their knowledge. Thank you very much. And I guess the only thing left to do then is ask what's your, what the health tech moment? So this is, I mean, bearing in mind, I ask everybody this across every episode. I was like, oh my gosh, what am I going to, what am I going to use? <laughs> what do I say? Um, and actually there's a really nice one. I don't know whether it's a, a health tech moment if you like but it's um when I put about the podcast so when the podcast was a year old I put a post on my personal Instagram about it um and how proud I was of it and you know kind of all these episodes we'd done and and that kind of thing and um an old school friend commented on it um who is now an occupational therapist and she commented on it saying, oh my God, Joss, I've just listened to this. I've just oh, listened wow. to this yeah. on Spotify, not knowing it was you that was involved in it at all. And you popped up on it because um, she'd been searching for some stuff around policies and healthcare and stuff like that. And our podcast had come up and yeah. it was actually, it was the episode that, I think it was the episode that I'd done with Julie Rayner right. from Hallmark, all about, you know, putting policies in place and, and the processes and things like that. And um and it was just one of those moments where you sort of go, wow, yeah. like, this has got <laughs> this has got an audience. This has got, you know, yeah. quite a wide audience. So, yeah, for for sort of an old school friend to reach out and has found this podcast and, you know, she must have got the shock of her life when yeah. <laughs> when I when she heard my um, my tones on it. But, um, yeah, it was just I think that for me was one of those moments that you sort of go, yeah, this is this yeah. is good. <laughs>
<laughs> Definitely. Feels right. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. It was a real feel good moment. So thanks for joining us this week, Justine. It's been great to have you in the hot seat for once. Thank you. <laughs> Can I go and have some cake now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. I keep getting like fumes of it. So <laughs> that with a cup of tea would be lovely. Um, and thanks to all our listeners for listening. Join us next time for another new episode. And don't forget to rate and subscribe. And if you have any questions for us or our guests, please email whatthehealthtech at radarhealthcare.com. <laughs>